Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 19th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a declassified email sent to Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State reveals the real reason why Libya was invaded. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> then, as if we're not already taxed enough, socialist Bernie Sanders wants to add another $19.6 trillion in tax hikes. Yeah, I don't think so, Bernie. Plus. So many children have lead in their blood in Flint, Michigan. A federal emergency has been declared. This is disgusting negligence of a system that wants to cut corners and doesn't care about the long-term devastating effects on your health. An emergency water crisis unfolds in Flint, Michigan, as our nation's water supply continues to reach toxic levels. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Today we have the very unfortunate news of bomb threats at over 30 U.S. schools. We see bomb threats were made against more than two dozen schools in New Jersey on Tuesday and also against schools in Massachusetts, Delaware, and Iowa, forcing evacuations and lockdowns that affected thousands of students. The threats, made in a robotic voice, appeared to come from a computer-generated phone number that could be traced back to a location in Bakersfield, California, sheriff said. Police said on Twitter they did not regard the attack as credible, credible, but the evacuation was carried out anyway as a precaution. And we see this more and more. It was just uh, a few weeks ago, I believe. We saw the threats in New York and also in California. Uh, New York decided to continue on with the school day. California took the precautions of uh, canceling school for the day. And I can't really blame the schools, you know, when you have a situation like that, especially uh, as we see attacks happening in our recent country history. I can't blame the schools for shutting down, but... I'm not exactly sure what can be done to remedy the situation because, yes, you care for the students, but are you going to shut down the schools every time somebody calls in, uh, even if you don't think it's a credible threat? It's not a, a easy situation to solve, and hopefully they'll catch the guys who are behind this situation. Now, today we saw a very interesting story by Kurt Nimmo about the situation in Libya. He brought out a lot of things I didn't know. I guess it came from the Clinton email scandal. Here's a look at Libya was invaded to prevent pan-African currency. He called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tonnes of gold. The UK has double that, but 10 times the population. Now, on our show here, we've had many financial experts, people who study the economy, Max Kaiser, Gerald Salente, Harry Dent. And many of them talk about the IMF and the World Bank. And now we have the article, IMF Cuts World Growth Forecast for Third Time. The International Monetary Fund has slashed its growth forecast for the global economy for the third time in less than a year as it predicted a bumpier ride for 2016. A sharp slowdown of trade in China and a slump in commodity prices, such as oil and metals, were cited as key reasons for the gloomy outlook. The IMF expects the world economy to grow by 3.4% this year and 3.6% in 2017, both figures 0.2 percentage points lower than its previous estimates 
made last October. Yeah, and as we were just talking about Gaddafi, you know, you can say what you want about the guy. I'm not cheerleading for the guy by any means, but he was trying to get his country on a stable gold standard because we see, uh, like, for example, here in the United States, we were taken off the gold standard. We have the Federal Reserve that is continually uh, devaluing our currency. And there's a movie that we sell in the InfoWars shop, uh, The American Dream. It's a cartoon that explains the history of the Federal Reserve and why our dollar continues to be devaluated. Anyway, uh, there's a point in the film where the guy, he asked the other guy, he's like, do you even understand what money is? And then they explain it to you back in you know ancient times, and I guess until we got off the gold standard, a dollar bill or you know whatever denomination you used was basically a representation of the money you have in the bank. So instead of walking around with big gold bars or you know gold coins in your pocket, you'd have the dollar bill that represents the money that you already have. That's what money is. But when you go off a gold standard, then your money is pretty much backed up by nothing or at least something that's much less valuable. Like I said, talking about Gaddafi, you know, you can say what you want about the guy. I'm not cheerleading. But, you know, he was trying to get the country back on a stable currency. But as we see countries all around the world to get further and further away from this, from real currency, then you have the issues where your dollars can be devaluated or you have other things uh, that can come in and knock down your economy. And as we continue on that, we have budget deficit to rise by $544 billion this year. A government report released Tuesday estimates that this year's budget deficit will, will rise $544 billion, an increase over prior estimates that can be attributed largely to tax cuts and spending increases passed by Congress last month. The deficit and debt picture over the long term has also worsened considerably. Much of the increase is mostly due to last month's legislation, which permanently extended several tax cuts that Congress had previously renewed temporarily. And as we're talking about taxes, let's talk about one Bernie Sanders. Now, I'm very interested in why so many adults are captivated by Bernie Sanders. I can understand young people thinking the guy is very interesting. And if I was in high school, I might like Bernie Sanders too. But, you know, as you become an adult, you go through high school, you maybe go through college or military, whatever, and you emerge, and I'm getting close to 30 now, people in their 30s, 40s, 50s who endorse Bernie Sanders make me scratch my head. Because, yes, the guy is promising to give you free this, free that, free everything, but you have to understand, you know, college kids, high school kids, they don't have that much work experience. But once you enter the workforce and you look at your check and you look at all the taxes that they take out of it, and you see people say, I want free stuff, I want everything free, I'm like, uh, even if it's free for you, I have to pay for it. Example, I can give a homeless man a dollar, and even though it's free to him, I had to work for it and eventually pay it to him. But I'm okay with that because I chose to give him that money. But when I see people saying, I want free I want free abortions at Planned Parenthood, I was like, I don't work so you can go have your abortion free at Planned Parenthood. That's not what I'm about. And all you high school kids and college kids, you may not understand this right now, but once you start paying your taxes on the job you have, hopefully you get a career one day and not just saddle down by a whole bunch of debt. Once you look at your paycheck, you're like, oh my goodness, they take all these thousands of dollars out of my check. Remember, that's to go to pay for the free stuff. The free stuff that other people get, they take out of your money. And you're just like, well, I thought it was free. No, it's not free. It's just free for them. But it's okay because it's going to come back and bite them in the butt later too. So when you're you know, 40 years old, whatever, you're going to be paying for somebody's free goodies at the colleges or whatever else. Here's the list of Bernie Sanders' $19.6 trillion tax hike. Taken together... Sanders is proposing $19.6 trillion in new taxes over a decade, according to an analysis by the, by the Washington Examiner, of which $14 trillion would come from his health care plan alone. And if you go to the site, we have a nice little uh, graphic there that you can look at, and you can see business health care premium tax, $6.3 trillion, ending tax-free status of employer health insurance, $3.1 trillion. Uh, one of my favorite ones, the death tax hike, $243 billion, uh, ending tax deductions, $150 billion, energy tax, one, uh, $135 billion uh, carried interest, uh, I mean, Social Security tax, $1.2 trillion. It just goes on and on and on and on. So like I was telling you earlier, just because it's free for somebody else doesn't mean that it's going to be free for you. And as we see things like Social Security and all that stuff, uh, the people who paid into it you know, probably should get something out of it. But, you know, if you're 19, 20 years old right now, don't expect uh, Social Security to be there for you when you become of age. I saw the 60 Minutes report uh, a few years ago. I can't remember where it was, but it was some small town. And basically, they had this uh, retired firefighter that they were profiling. The guy worked, you know, 20, 30 years in the fire department, whatever. 
and now he's working as a security guard at the local shopping mall. And he has to do this because the town, or I guess more specifically the mayor, refuses to pay out benefits to, you know, the, the firefighters, the cops, whoever else who had been working for the city, for the county for so many years. And it's very interesting to me that if the mayor takes that position that he's not going to pay people on the back end, I think the mayor shouldn't be paid on the front end, say, okay, you're going to work for free, and eventually down the line we may give you something, some type of retirement check. But it's very wrong, and it continues to happen. And so uh, you guys keep this in mind, because I remember I worked for the county back in Oklahoma at one point, and they were like, hey, do you want to pay into the retirement plan? I was like, no, I mean, everybody who's worked here 20, 30 years, I hope you get your retirement check, but I'm not really expecting that for myself. So, you know, I'd rather just save that money and, and actually save it. Don't keep it and go spend it, but save it and put it in some type of fund or uh, savings account for you to be to be used later on. Now, let's talk about Jeb Bush. Um, he's a very interesting guy. <laughs> he's come from the Bush family, uh, you know, uh, let the Belange fly out on 9-11 before uh, Osama was listed as an official suspect. You know, uh, uh, wars in Iraq, uh, Iran-Contra, all that good stuff. Now people are starting to get the taste in their mouth, but maybe they don't want another Bush in the White House. But you wouldn't know that from the GOP. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat either, for that matter. I'm an independent. You know, I don't want to push any political party. I, if I see something wrong in the Democratic Party, I say so. If I see something wrong in the Republican Party, I say so as well. And this is something that's wrong uh, as, as far as the way things are being run. GOP elites blow $65 million on Jeb Bush and his failed campaign. Roll Call reported Right to Rise raised $103 million in 2015 and has spent more than $65 million so far. But nine months after he got into the race, Jeb has collapsed from first to a tie for worst and is now polling at less than 5% nationally. But that's not going to stop them from throwing tons of money into the Bush campaign. You know, he says, my name is Jeb, exclamation mark, and I earned that. The people of Florida love me. They trust me. Oh, we have the recounts in Florida so my brother could become president of the United States. Um, a lot of people aren't really buying it. Now, it's not saying let's not elect Jeb Bush and go elect a Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. I'm not saying that one bit. But I like how they knock down the numbers here and they show all the things that the Republican Party, uh, Republican Party could have bought for that $103 million dollars. And they have a nice list here on the site. They said they could have bought 20 million children's books for uh, the kids of the Barbara Bush Foundation, sent uh, 22,000 four-year-olds to preschool for a year, covered a year's tuition for 10,000 college students, or paid for a year of drug treatment for uh, 700,000 children in Africa. So this is what the Republican Party is spending their money on, not to say that uh, the Dem Democratic Party is any better for that reason. You know, like I said, I see something wrong over here, I say so. If I see something wrong over there, I say so as well. But, you know, they're like shoving these people down your throat. You have to vote for Jeb. You have to vote for Hillary or Bernie Sanders. You know, uh, and I don't really like any of them, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. I like Rand. You know, Rand's not a perfect guy. He did some stuff uh, endorsing Mitt Romney uh, years back that I'm not a fan of. But other than that, he has a pretty consistent record. But I definitely take him more than uh, anybody else on either side of the card. Also, you got libertarians like Gary Johnson coming up in the ranks. Interested to see what he has to say. Uh, I haven't kept up with Gary in a few years, so I'd have to, you know, refresh myself on his policies and stances and platforms. But be interested to hear what he has to say. Now, if you've been watching the show, one thing you know is David Knight does not like self-driving cars, <laughs> and I'm not big fans of them either. Um, Mainly because we've seen all the glitches these things have, the cars, you know, driving in reverse, uh, other things like there's that funny clip of the journalist who was standing right in front of the self-driving car like it was going to stop in front of him like the Batmobile, ran them straight over. And of course, technology will advance, but I'm not big fans of them anyway. I'd rather be able to uh, drive myself and take that personal responsibility. But now we see Davos Insider's self-driving cars will spy on you. Self-driving cars operate as ground-based surveillance drones collecting images and data on both drivers and the public at large, according to the World Economic Forum Insiders. And they have a quote there. But, you know, it's basically an imperial probe droid. It's another way for people to spy on you, to check into your activities. And it's not really anything new with the self-driving car. You can see things like, uh, what was it, OnStar. You hit the button, and boop, OnStar, they can hear everything you're saying. And that's to say that it can go both ways. If you have some type of uh, person